Today's demonstration is how you can trim very difficult to trim items. If you look at this little bottle, you might have to figure out some way to hold it. And it turns out that these long arms really serve the purpose very well if you're going to learn the follower method. The follower method says that you rest your, if you rest your hand like this, the tool is always concentric to the paw. So all I do is use the Geffen grip to turn this. You can see it turns it very smoothly and easily. Once that's turned there, then I'm going to turn the tool over and I'm going to bring it up this way. I'll finish the shape like that. Then I'm going to do this. And then, since I want the, a little bit of a hollow in it, I'll take one of this tool, which has a, the right curvature for a hollow for the bottom, and I'll hollow out the bottom slightly. And this is the studio foot that I like to make. And then once it's hollowed out, I'll take this straight edge and we can verify then that we have enough hollow. And if I polish the center through this, this mm -hmm. way first, to make sure I don't have a center button, then the rest of it can be polished using the burnishing end of this tool. This is designed specifically and polished very, very finely to produce a really, really slick finish on the foot. Then the same thing will be done right here. I've got a nice shape here, but it has little bits of cut line and scratches where the tool leaves little grooves, and this drives all of that to a smooth finish. So now we've made that pot, but let's look at how you can do something that's a little more tricky. Here's a large decanter, and the problem with this is the same thing. Well, watch, I can trim this just as easily using the follower method. I'm going to trim up this section right here. I like the shape right there. Then I'm going to make the transition here, and there's a little bit of a bump there I don't like. I'm going to rest my hands together and very carefully shave that. Oops. And if it bounces a little bit, I just didn't maintain it. That much. I've got to maintain a little bit of compression on it. Maintaining a bit of downward pressure keeps that from bouncing. And that simply wedges it tightly enough that it can't scoot. And that really shows how easy it is to trim it. Now, once I've got that curve generated there, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to hollow out the foot very carefully. Because I'm referencing this right to the pot with my hand, I'm following it. In other words, all I'm using the Giffen grip to do is to turn the piece very smoothly using the wheel. Now, if I've got the appropriate amount of hollow, which is what concerns me, when this is hollowed out, now I can begin the burnishing the same way. I'm going to burnish through the middle to get rid of the center button if there is one. And I'm going to burnish like this. And once I've done that, I want to make a little bit of a bevel for glaze clearance. This is a t about a 10 degree angle um, pitch. Angle like that. Polish that to here. Makes that really smooth. And then I'm going to come along here. I have a little bit smoother tool I can use for finishing this a little bit more smoothly right here. So I'm going to polish this up a little bit first. When I like the shape, I'm going to come right over it with the burnishing tool and polish this up to the same quality. You can see this would be impossible to chuck by any other means. And if you look at it now, it's in no way been harmed by this process. It turned out really pretty.